discovered in a mine in, uh, outside a little town called Iterbi, which is near Stockholm in Sweden. And they had been extracting minerals from the mine, and they found a mineral that seemed rather peculiar. They couldn't understand what it contained until they realised that it contained a new element. This was sort of the beginning of the 18th century. Now, in those days, if you discovered a new element, you got to choose its name. And they decided to name the element after the town of Iterbi. So this element is called yttrium. What's rather interesting is that this mineral contained not just one new element, but they found out it contained four new elements. And so they decided to name all four elements after the town of Iterbi. So these four elements are called yttrium, yttrium, erbium, and terbium, <laughs> which is uh, a little bit confusing, I think. We're going to look at the first of these, yttrium. Now, yttrium can be used to make a compound, and I have some of the compound here. It's called yttrium barium copper oxide, and it's just a hard black lump of ceramic material. What I'm going to do is to put it into some liquid nitrogen, and so that yttrium barium copper oxide is now being cooled down to minus 196 degrees. That takes a moment or two to cool down, so while we're waiting, I also have in this cup another piece of identical material, exactly the same as the first, and I'm going to cover this in liquid nitrogen, so that too can be cooling down. Now at room temperature, this material isn't very remarkable, but when it gets sufficiently cold, it has a very interesting and very strange property. It becomes what we call a superconductor. Now a superconductor is a material that has lost all its electrical resistance. And a material which has zero electrical resistance has the property that it can repel a magnetic field. So this ring is a ring made of steel, and it's covered in little magnets, very strong magnets. They alternate North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, and so on. And in a minute, when this is cooled down, we're going to see if that yttrium barium copper oxide can repel the magnetic field produced by these magnets. This just takes a, a moment or two to cool down. So if I look in here, I can see they're boiling away very vigorously. That means the, the ceramic material is giving up its heat to the liquid nitrogen, is boiling the liquid nitrogen away and, uh, and cooling down in the process. So essentially, I'm just waiting for the boiling to stop. When it stops boiling, that means the ceramic material has reached the same temperature as the liquid nitrogen. So it will then be at minus 196 degrees. Okay, so let's fetch this out then, and let's see if this can repel magnetic field. Okay, so this is actually quite a special kind of superconductor. It's what we call a type 2 superconductor. And that means that as well as repelling magnetic field, it can also trap magnetic field. Now remember I've got another one of these sitting inside this polystyrene cup, and underneath is a, a cylinder, and on the top of the cylinder is a, a very strong magnet. Now the field from that magnet was already passing through the ceramic material before I added the liquid nitrogen. So I've now cooled it down, it should have become a superconductor, and hopefully it will have trapped that magnetic field. So it should still be gripping onto that field. That means I should be able to take away the support from this cylinder. And by the way, on the outside of the cylinder, we've put the logo for the International Year of Chemistry. 2011 has been a year-long celebration around the world of the delights of chemistry and of the importance of chemistry for our everyday lives, and I thought it would be a nice way to just mark that occasion. So I think this has cooled down now, so I'm going to see if I can lower this very carefully.
Okay, well, thank you very much. That, that pretty much brings us to the end of the lecture. Uh, just before we wrap up, um, I thought we would, we would finish with, uh, with a rather nice demo, but just before we do, I just want to ask you to join me in thanking somebody who's put a lot of effort into helping me prepare and deliver this lecture, and that's